Okay, look, it's just over here. So if we, I think, if we, if, if I think now's a good time to go. Let's, let's, let's do it. No, not yet. No. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, no? Yeah, let's do it. So has anyone heard of Robert Wedderburn before? No? I hadn't heard of him either. It was about a year and a half ago was the first time I heard about him. And uh, I was asked to go and meet this guy called Stuart Butler. And uh, he said, I want you to do this play. And I was like, do this play? I'm, I'm, I'm retired, I don't do theatre anymore. And he said, well, have a look at this. And so um, I took the book home and um, I started to read it and I was like, how comes I don't know about this? How comes I don't know about a person of mixed heritage who was a political activist in London in the 1800s? So I read a little bit more and it started to make me think that I almost had a responsibility to pull my old body, crumbled, arthritic, stiff body back into performance again. So reluctantly, I started to look at it and think, how could I do this with theatre and dance without injuring myself? And I was very lucky to come across Mary Lou, and she was a dancer, a mature dancer of myself. And um, we decided, let's do this. And we put a performance on in Stroud. I thought, one little performance, and that's it, we're done. We've done our, our little bit, but it went quite well. And uh, we're like, okay, um, looks like there's a stage two to happen. Um, we did this out of our, our passion. Um, we thought, we know we need to get paid. I thought, well, we're going to get paid. He says, well, I'll do the funding. I said, what well, those forms that you open up, like 500 pages long. And she goes, yeah, 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 we, we can do that. And I was like, well, you take care of that. I'm going to go and cry in the corner because even the thought of it just makes me 
depressed. And um, so yeah, so she did that and uh, we got the money. And we're like, okay, let's go, let's do this. It was exciting. We're gonna do something that contributes to the stories of untold black history. And um, uh, COVID uh, came and uh, we're like, okay, that's that then. So everybody's reinventing themselves. Um, and so that means, okay, what we'll do is we'll do it digitally and then we'll have a live performance afterwards. We just have to adapt to the situation. And what I find interesting about the COVID also is I got a cold during this place, but I didn't know. I had a cough, I had a fever, I was sweating. And I went for one of those COVID tests where they, they, they kind of put that thing in your mouth and oh, oh, it makes you gag. And um, I came back and it was, um, it was negative. It was the first time I found negative so positive. But it's also the horrible feeling was with the pandemic is that if I was sick, then everybody else that we've been, we've been wearing masks and all sorts of stuff, but everyone would be, have to stay at home and suddenly there's this responsibility. So this pandemic is changing our art expression, changing our life, but also there's other things coming up like Black Lives Matter came up during this period where there was a global consciousness that different lives don't have the same um, equal outlook on. And that, I believe, comes from the stories that are shared today that are still held from the past. And to put something like Robert Wedderburn's story into this collage of, of history would be uh, a good thing to do, I think. So that's what we did, is we started to, to put it together. We brought in Louise, we brought in Chiona, so we had music to hold the, the story as well, which was very exciting. And you're gonna, you're gonna see that later on, so yeah, keep watching. Don't, don't like pause or anything, just keep hanging in there. And then it's to just look at what it meant in the 1800s to, to, to fight for these rights that we don't, didn't know about. And, and what that meant for the struggles that we now enjoy today. And that's what I was wondering. I don't know about him, but in the future, I was thinking if we did digitalize everything, all the books disappeared, and we were just uh, linked to some kind of robot, and was, we could just teleport, or not teleport, like telepathically, that's not the word, but you know what I mean, we're thinking without thinking across each other. And, uh, and then one day somebody pulls the plug, and they go, oh yeah, by the way, do you know that performance in 2020, there were no black people in there? And you're like, no, yeah, there were no, there wasn't. Show me the evidence. Uh, there wasn't, yeah, but the plug's been pulled, hasn't it? So there's no evidence, isn't there? There were no black people. Only, only white people were performing in that performance. Um, we would think that would be a bit strange. And I think that's exactly what's happened. Although I'm kind of hamming it up a bit, that's kind of what's happened. In the World War II, and, uh, there were um, Caribbean, African, Asian shoulders in World War I. We've only recently started to talk about that. So this is our contribution to those sto untold stories. And hopefully, we will start to share more of these as time goes on. Robert Wedderburn came into this world from rape. His father was a plantation owner in Jamaica, and his mother was born in Africa before her enslavement. His father sold his mother off before he was born, and then again after his birth. <laughs>
I was brought up by my mother's mother talking to me. But Jesus didn't protect her. As I saw her float almost to death in front of my eyes. It's barely 11 minutes old. I joined the British Navy at the age of 17. The king failed me against the wars against the French and the Spanish. My loyalty began to wane as I was inspired by the mutiny of the North, where sailors fighting for their basic human rights, for the service and sacrifice to sea. There was power in numbers against the powerful, and change was evidence. London became my home. Money was never in abundance, but I managed to get a few small contracts working as a tailor. And selling my political pamphlets and charging them just for my popular preaching. It wasn't much, but it was enough for me and my missus to get by.
my fight for freedom was met by the Methodist Church because they believed all were equal in the eyes of God. But their willingness to petition and work within this political system did not fit my opposition to the church hierarchy. said, here John, take your freedom. Your actions fill me, fill me with inspiration. And yes, the slave shall be free. My dear Miss Campbell, my dear sister, my dear sister, you still share part blood of the Maroons who fought for 20 years against the Christians. The English wanted to reduce them back to slavery after they escaped to the Jamaican woods from the Spaniards. The, the Christians reckoned that. Reckon? Reckon. Oh, reckon is that with um, is that with a, is that with a C or a K? A C K. So, uh, what? It's both. It's both. R E C K O N. R E C O K T. Oh, just could you just spell it for me? Yeah. R. Yeah. E. Yeah. C. Yeah. K. Yes. O. N. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Right. The Christians reckon they were worth five pounds per head or for each pound of ears. But the Maroons were not barbarians because this was proven by a bold flag of truth between them and the Spaniards. Oh, the Spaniards, I made the Spaniards in the... Sorry, let me remind this bit again. It's not the Spaniards. They made a bold flag of truth. So we need the plucking bit, don't we? Yeah, no, that'd be great. Yeah, it's more exciting while I'm writing. It's the emotion I feel from it. Okay. They reckon they were worth five pounds per head for each pair of ears. But the... The Maroons were not barbarians, and this was proven by the bold flag of truth between them and the Britons. 
my dear sister, although you still hold slaves, do not be afraid or alarmed, because they must be let free. I inform you for your present safety and also for the good of your future offspring. You must let the slaves go immediately, because in their prison house a voice can be heard. Let the slaves have their freedom. splinter groups and I had to leave the Spencians, the soft thinking Spencians, because they weren't really, they didn't have the guts to really go into revolution. So I left with my followers and my bench. Yeah, I, my bench, not their bench. They can go and get their own benches. This bench belonged to me for my followers to sit down so we could plan for the future of our revolution. Thank you. 
Good evening. Welcome to Hopskins Chapel. It's so good that you are here and uh, I'm really looking forward to sharing this evening with you with uh, my husband, Robert Wedding. Oh, hello, wonderful. I'd like to come in. That's wonderful. That's it. Um, do you have a mask? Thank you. Yes, thank you. I'm exempt from wearing a mask. Wonderful. So there's a few more people joining us now. So that's it. If you wouldn't mind not bunching up, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. I did say, yeah, I don't want to be rude, but do you mind not bunching up? Because it's my name on the risk assessment. And um, thank you. Lovely. So um, that's it. If you could just move your chairs a bit further apart. And at the back, if you'd like to stay two metres apart, that would be. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to be safe. We've got to be safe. Yeah. Because uh, we want to make sure everyone comes in safe. Yeah, comes in safe. So you're all in now, wonderful. So let's commence and uh, enjoy. As the thirst of gold takes hold, he gains the courage to be more bold and strips all dignity of the other, rips the child from his mother. Chain the arms and legs and neck, throws the unwanted over deck. As the economics no longer makes sense, a callous mindset calculates the expense. Black bodies beaten and put to auction for the white man's desperate need for fortune. Human flesh becomes a commodity. It is no longer regarded as a commodity. As blood is spilled and freedom castrated, minds are crushed, motivation sedated, trembling, naked, wounded, sighing, bodies squashed. Some are dying. A land is lost. A hope runs thin. Abuse is subject to the colour of my skin. Will the master acknowledge this human disaster? Will he listen to the spiritual pastor? Look at all the blood that stains. Free your soul from your internal chains. Let go of your grip of selfish need in order for your spirit to succeed. Drop your thoughts, you pathetic weasel. Why not embrace mankind? Because all are equal. You may feel the fear and be a wee bit frightened, but with this freedom, you will become enlightened. That's right. Let's talk about the good book and contradictions. Because at one point it says one thing and another it says another. So let's take for example, Jesus Christ said that no man has ever seen God. But then Moses goes around and sees him in every bush. Jesus Christ says no man has ever conversed with God yet. Moses goes around and talking with him all over the place. So, which one is telling the truth? Because one of them has to be a liar. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Acknowledge no, no king, no priest, no father. That's the kind of information we want in our heads. I mean, let's talk about the, the story of Balaam. Let's talk to you about the story of Balaam. Just an example of a little bit of a context. So, you've got Balaam, he's on his donkey, he's riding a bomb. And he's just, been, he's just been told that he has to go and put a spell on the Morris people. Okay, so he's going along, clippy, 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 clop, clippy, 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 clop, clippy, and he's got this gold bit and give it to him. And he's like, oh, I love my gold, I love my gold. And he's so focused on the gold, he didn't see a huge angel. <laughs> I didn't get a huge angel. And with a huge store. Uh, not a store, because that would be someone who would buy something. He's already eaten. So he came back and bought himself a sword. He's got a huge sword. And he says, Beware, I shall slice you into cheese bits. 
It probably didn't have milk at that time, but I just used that because it just came to me as an inspiration. So he's on his donkey and he's riding around, and he doesn't see the angel because he's so sort of focused on the money. But the donkey there, and the donkey's saying, like, okay, no, no, there's, there's people tell the donkey that that would be blasphemous. So he's probably saying, like, oh no, he's going along, and he sees the angel, and he says, let's get off this path. And he goes across the path, or stumbles a bit, and hit Balan into a wall. Bam! Balan's leg is killing him. Like, get off, you stupid ass! Get out of me! So is he an ass or a donkey? He's more likely to be an ass in that time. So he's in here, he comes off, and he goes, I'm gonna kick your ass! Kicks donkey's ass! And he starts punching the donkey. And he's just like knocking the donkey out. And the donkey's like, oh please, please, why? Why? And he can't speak, he wants to speak. And God says, I shall give you voice! And the donkey goes, ha ha! No, please, why are you hurting me? Have I not always speak to you fairly? Yes, you have, but I would be really irritated. But there was an angel who was going to slice you in two. I was going to slice you in two. And Balin looks up, and he sees the angel, and he says, Nice one, Donkey, thank you. And Donkey says, No worries. No, what's going on here? As Donkey now punches the ass and starts speaking for an ass, why don't they order below me? Jesus Christ said, Acknowledge. Acknowledge no king, no priest, no father, but that has never been practiced. And it's all because of Paul the Apostle. He taught very differently. He did, didn't he? He taught pay your money, pay Caesar. But why did he do that? Why did he say that? Because he knew that if he went around making people pay their taxes, he could preach what and where he wanted without fear of spies like that in the room here today. The thing I find is that Christianity really hasn't been practiced in this world today. And that's because of a stupid fellow called the Apostle who influences our Christian beliefs and keeps our Christian masters in power. And that's why we have to dig down and find the courage Courage like Christ, so we can gain our own equal rights in the face of God. Acknowledge no king, no priest, no father. Acknowledge no king, no priest, no father. Acknowledge no king, no priest, no father. I stand before this court in the, in the charge of uh, blasphemy. I just want to say to the, the members of the court that I can't afford legal service, so I'll, I'll be representing myself. Hmm. 200 years ago, people were put to death for not believing in the Trinity, but today our king lets us deny the Trinity and also preach different doctrines without fear. So, my people were humble people. They, they, they didn't understand fine spun discourse. So does that mean that I'm to be convicted for speaking with a vulgar tongue? It seems to be a conspiracy to keep the poor in superstition and ignorance. If there is anybody here who is a sincere friend of religious... Is there anyone who is here and I'll say this clearly, as a, a true friend of religious liberty, that I would be acquitted. But if this hearing is in the spirit of bigotry and religious persecution, then I will, I will, I will, I will, I will take the satisfaction to suffer like Christ, and suffer on the cross, well, at least metaphorically on the cross, as I suffer for a deeper truth. Didn't get everything I wanted to say out and didn't even buy it. So, uh, yeah, I was sent to prison. <sighs> Small little place, really damp, dark.
I, um, I was thinking about Elizabeth Wedderburn and um, I know really very, very little about her and I wonder who she might have been. Women at that time, well people didn't write about women at that time and you know, that was, that was how it was. So when I think about Elizabeth and I think about what it must have been like for her to be married to someone like Robert Wedderburn, I mean I'm sure he was quite a pain in the ass at times. And I think her life must have been uh, just just tough, really tough at times. And off he went to prison, and there she was with the kids at home, and struggling with poverty, and you know all sorts. And it, it must have been well. I can't even begin to imagine how frustrated she must have been uh, with the aristocracy that imprisoned her, his, her husband at that time. I mean, if someone had imprisoned my husband, Steve. Speaking his truth, <laughs> oh well, I'd be really pissed off about that. And um, I'm sure she was. And I know, or oh, I don't know, well, there's evidence, let's say there's evidence to prove that somebody wrote a letter for Elizabeth to the Lord Chief Justice. And she would have had to convey herself in, in a polite manner. That would have been, I think, contradictory to their beliefs. But she would have had to suck up. And I think that she would have been feeling anything but polite. She may have had feelings of um, anger. And, and I think feelings of frustration and, and, and hatred and sadness <coughs> and loneliness. My dear Lord Chief Justice, I write to you in the hope that Mr. Wedderburn be moved closer to his family. To send a rich man to jail is no greater punishment as to send a poor man. When a rich man is imprisoned, he may have every luxury. When a poor man is imprisoned, it ought to be where his friends and family can reach him. Had you sent Mr. Wedderburn to Newgate, he would have been allowed a small portion of meat as allocated by the prison allowance, instead of his poor family having to divide their meals to support him. To send a man to a distant jail 150 miles away from his poor distressed family, <laughs> it is double the punishment to him as it is to any other man. Mr. Wedderburn is a journeyman tailor verging on 60. I am poor. I, I cannot render his assistance. I know and hear you are the most humane of judges. Please, I ask your mercy in sending my husband closer to his family. I am your most obedient servant, Elizabeth Wedderburn. William Wilberforce encouraged me to finish my story. 
He suggested that I focus my energy on the free and slaves and less on the injustices of religion. But I continue to fight all injustice. Spending years secluded in this prison. But it's given me time to reflect on the religious structure and also to look at outdated dogmas. I felt a great satisfaction thinking about the arts and the science and the wonderful progress it's done for us. We've got to remind ourselves that the arts and science continue to develop on the achievements of the past, either breaking them down or building upon them. We've got to think about the arts and the sciences and how their progression over time has really influenced the ways that things are done. I mean, for example, we look at cast iron, the pipes, they conduct water and gas light to our homes. The bridges, they, they, they enable us to cross the widest rivers. In, it forms the, the structure and the bonds of our homes. And also, if we think about it, there's, from one sense it's for accessories, in another it's for strength, and in a third it's for both. But I don't want to keep on, on about this because I mean, it just makes my head go a bit dizzy when I try to put all these things together. But really what I want to say is that I want to take all the credit for myself because it was also um, the inspiration behind my proposal were came from uh, a woman selling apples. Apples! So what I did is that as I was walking down the street, I came across this wall down the church. And apples! I, I went to the clergy and I said, uh, uh, excuse me, um, this, this worn down church, when you rebuild it, are you going to make it out of wood or stone? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. It's going to be made out of cast iron. What? What? Wow. wow. Next year we'll be making a parson out of cast iron. A parson out of cast iron. That was it. That was the idea. That was the idea I was waiting for. And if we think about it, if we think about it, the, the, the clergy of the so-called legitimate church has become so mechanical that maybe one day we could replace him with a past iron castle. And, and, and if he was replaced, that means it would mean religion wouldn't go into disrespect because the lies from the clergy, they, they wouldn't happen because a cast iron parson can't party. So they can't get disgraced for sexual misconduct or adultery, drunkenness, gambling. And even if you want, at the end of every service, you could say, fear God, honor your king and pay your taxes. So there was no revolution. Yeah, and there was much wrote about me after this period. A few little meetings I went to they acknowledged. I was also taken to court for running a brothel. Didn't do it. Oh, well, basically, I, well, I, the women needed support, I needed support. It, it wasn't a brothel. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, kind of run out of money. Never really had it in the first place, so I ended up going to Corpus Grader. Just got to let them finish off with this one. It's dis disrespectful. So, <clears throat> well, I suppose there, there was this, the free uh, the free slave act in 1833, which which was good. And then there's the charter movement. But excuse me, but do you want to get a move on? There's a queue back here. Uh, I'm sorry. I was just. Uh, I'll finish up. I, I won't wait. So yeah, um, no revolution, but I suppose reform over time. It's a little bit squashed in here. 